I never answered the question if this is the best course in Massachusetts. And the answer is... Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Why do I always look so tired? It could be the new freaking kitten that starts jumping around and licking our faces at freaking 4 a.m. Every day. Unbelievable. All right, anyway, one of the most frequent requests I get is to go check out Borderland State Park. Supposedly, it's the best course in Massachusetts, and I think that I've played it before. I played it in 2014 with Avery. I don't remember at all. I haven't been there since, for sure. So, I'm gonna drive there today and see if my memory kicks in then. But if it's really the best course in Massachusetts, then I better get out there and rate this course today. And fun fact, Eagle McMahon drew this. And it's in my apartment. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'll see you when I get there because vlogging and driving is not okay. Whoop! All right, we made it. I have about three hours before the rain is supposed to kick in. That should be plenty of time for a solo round. And uh, from first impression, I do not recognize this place yet. But Avery told me that I've played here before, so I don't know, we'll see. Let's get going. Way more trees than I was hoping for. 545 foot par four. I think it's in the long position. I can't really tell by the T sign. At first shot, I'm gonna try and throw a nice and smooth FD just down the middle. I'm not really sure where the basket is. I think it's in the long, but if I get like 350 feet down there, I'm pretty happy. Okay, I think that was pretty good. Let's look where it was. I'll actually do a scoring round here, so I'll keep score. So if you ever make it out here, beat my score. First try. I think finding my discs is gonna be an issue again today because the amount of freaking leaves on the ground here is unbelievable. It's about three weeks late for New England to look beautiful, and right now it's just all the trees are losing the leaves and it's worse than snow, because at least in snow you see the trail where the disc went in. But in leaves it's just impossible to find sometimes. But I found my disc right here. I only have like 70 feet left. So let's try and make one. That's okay. Taking a birdie on hole one. I actually noticed that both baskets are in, so I could play the shorts or the longs. I'm just gonna play for the longs this time because I'm feeling good. And one through one, one under. I still don't recognize this course. And this is a par five, so I have no clue where to go really. Which means FD again, just try and keep it in the middle. Not quite as far as I would like, but uh, we're in the fairway and that counts. All right, I saw the basket. I'm really short. I saw the basket way down there. The gap is like a high turnover. I'm throwing my FD3 because I wanted to hold the line for long, but I also want to finish left at the end. That was pretty bad. Too much angle. Let's see where I ended up. So I cut rolled a bit into the crap. I have about 350 left. There's gonna be a sidearm, maybe even a sidearm roller, or maybe I can squeeze a backhand also. I 
I decided to go with a back end just because I knew I would get it at least down there for a putt, like no matter how bad I throw it. And I threw a PD2 for this short distance because I couldn't get much power with all these trees and little bushes that just were totally in the way for my run up or swing. So I want to pass this that will skip and go far even with lower speed. After a mediocre drive, a bad second shot, a decent third shot, 25 feet left for birdie. Definitely a very fair par five, if I could say the least. Next hole. All right, made it to hole three. This is a tricky shot too. There's two different gaps, 400 feet. I'm gonna throw an FD again. Kind of release it on a slight hyzer. Just basically aim for the tree in the middle of the fairway. It's about 200 feet away. So if I hit that tree, then I'm still easy three. And if I miss it, then chance for birdie. All right, I didn't turn that enough at all. Probably 60 feet left, about pin high. But uh, ow. But uh, you can't birdie every hole. All right, this basket is on this huge boulder. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, slightly downhill putt too, about 60 feet. Running this would be pretty stupid. But I didn't come here to lay up, so I'm gonna give it a little hyzer run. So in case I miss, at least it'll stay somewhat close, I hope. Ooh. Did that roll? No. That I thought I made it, but just missed it short. Stayed a bit close, I think. Hole four is another par three. It's not the basket all the way straight. It's actually like a bit further and cuts pretty hard left. I usually wouldn't throw a PD2 for this distance. But I'm doing it right now just so I can throw it a bit more gentle and get a bit more skip out of it. Initially, I just want to hit the first gap and then let the disc do the work. Oh, I parked the short hole. I kind of yanked it a bit. Not the worst run, set up a par. Looks to me like dead straight, so this is a hit the gap or die hole. I'm gonna throw my favorite just to throw straight. Hope I hit the gap. Okay, I definitely hit the gap. A little too high, a little too much hyzer. But got a pretty friendly click kick to the middle of the fairway. Should be a pretty easy birdie from there. On the Pro Tour, this would definitely be a par three. But uh, we're not on the Pro Tour. Decent run for Eagle, but take a birdie. All right, hole six looks like another par four. 490 feet. Just a long and straight hyzer. I'm gonna throw a high speed DD3. This one's kind of flippy, so I'm gonna throw it on a hyzer and want it to like flip up and then carry straight. And high speed disc, just because I want it to carry as far as possible. I have no idea if that's good or not, but according to the T sign, that was good. This is a really bad spot. So, 
I'm gonna throw my P1X just because I want to put it on an Anheuser angle. There's a little gap out there and I just don't want it to finish left at all. I just want it to keep going right as far as I can. Lucky. Oh yeah. Okay, and that was as about about as good as a result as I could have asked for. I'm not sure how far from the basket it is, but it's a putt. Bad putt. I think playing a course blind, I still don't recognize any of this, so my brain might be messed up or I actually never played this. We have finally a pretty wide open hole. 610 feet par four. All I want to do is beat the pine trees on the left. So give it some room on the right and just throw as hard as I can. That was a good shot. Ah. OB, OB, OB. Another par four. Pro tip, throw an understable disc for hyzers. They go a lot further. I gave that one pretty much juice. I think I pushed it a bit long, but it's a par four, so I'm good at scrambling. Always look at every option. There's so many options, especially in the woods, and just play with percentages. What's the highest percentage shot you can throw? And I think in this case is taking the right gap. It's a bit of a tighter gap, but I think a bit easier to hit and if even if I miss it'll be maybe still a putt. Throwing a driver because I want skip and I'm not throwing it very hard so I want it to get fast to its point. That was not a great shot. I kind of missed my line by a couple of feet but still skid up there had a pretty decent angle on it and I think I have like a 15 footer left for birdie. Yet another par four, only 425 feet. But as you can see, a lot of obstacles to hit on the way there. I think in tournament play, I would throw a sidearm here just to make sure I hit the gap and get somewhat down there. Actually, I'm gonna throw a sidearm. Got my pretty understable DD3. My sidearm is not very powerful. It's not terrible, but just try and hit the gap and get like 300 feet down there. Yeah, and that's what a first sidearm of the day looks like. Pretty typical. <laughs> Only like 150 feet left. Pretty open gap left side for turnover. And that's the case for my MD3. Easy birdie. Not playing phenomenal, but no big mistakes yet. We're gonna just roll with it. That was the front nine. Let's see what the back has to offer. So far, I'm definitely enjoying this course, but uh, we need a couple more sick holes to make it a really great course. Hole 10, right there, let's go. I think I'm gonna go for the hyzer. There's two trees to miss. Going with the DD3. Again, slightly flippy disc and fast disc. 
just to make sure I get the distance. And if I release it on a hyzer, that it like pulls straight and kind of finishes more straight than just dumping less. Oh, I thought I freaking pimped that one, but I uh, cut it a bit wide, maybe slightly the wrong disc. It pulled a bit straighter than I wanted, but it got a decent kick again, so it's gonna be another par. Oh, overturned it. Oh, tapping for par. I haven't buried a par three yet. It looks actually pretty far down there. And if I release this on a hyzer, it'll go way further than the Doombird, which just wants to finish just quick low. Look good from here, hard to tell. All right, I ended up just 25 feet long. A little breezy out here, so these are the testers. If you can't make every putt of this size, you're killing it. Ugh. I just can't birdie a par three. Crazy Simon would probably throw it over the top. But uh, not wanting to lose the disc, Simon is gonna throw it straight through the gap. Yeah. That was one of my favorite shots of the day so far. Pimped it. Right here, that was the gap to hit. I went nice and through. In the fairway. Basket's right there. Got about 90 feet left. Come on. Ugh, not bad, just not good enough. MD3. I just can't. I don't know what. That was not great. I mean, I got down the fairway, that's fine. It's definitely a worst case scenario par. I'm actually a lot closer than I thought, so I'm only like 25 feet. I better make this one. Finally a birdie, let's go. This is the shortest par four so far. Only 383. I might end up a bit short, but it's a par four, so I'm gonna definitely try and get an eagle. Let's go. A little too high and I was hugging the right side all the way, but uh, I'm probably within 40 feet for Eagle. Oh, no good at all. Come on. I need some putting practice, guys. Looks to be just straight up the gap. I'm gonna throw the same disc. Oh, missed it. Good lucky. Oh, I think I parked the short one again, so scrambling for par. Probably a 90 footer. I'll give it a run. Good layup. I'm going to choose my FD3. Pretty much my straightest flying disc, so I'm going to try and keep it low and punch through as far as I can. Got through pretty far. Should be easy from there. All right guys, I, I think I ended up having like almost the perfect drive. This is the short basket. And on this course it seems 
almost on every hole, if you park the short basket off the tee, you're gonna have a pretty easy up and down for the long basket. That's not good. Ah. Okay, now this has got to be the signature hole of this course. This is absolutely awesome. Like, beautiful. Oh, I wish every hole would look like this. I think I see the basket. I could be wrong. I don't really know where to throw. It's a par four again, 525 feet. I wish they would show the house so I could like reference that. But it looks pretty straight, so I'm just gonna throw it up there and then look from there. Going with my Glow PD2. Pretty much exactly where I want it to be. I don't know if it's good, but we'll see up there. Almost landed on the tennis court. The tee sign was a bit deceiving again. The basket is like right over these bushes here. So this is gonna be a guessing shot. Definitely not a great shot. And I think the basket's on a little slope too. So if it lands with hyzer, it'll probably roll down the hill. A flick would be the best shot here, but I don't, I don't have that. I'm going to try and putt this and land it flat. We will see. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Another par four. I wonder what course par is. I'll figure it all out later, but. I think I'm 11 under, maybe 12, probably 11 or 10. I don't know. Anyway, another turnover shot, another FD night strike shot. Gonna put it up high into the trees, give it like a good 80% power and have a turnover and hopefully just get through as far as I can. Again, I don't really know where the basket is. It looked good from here. I hope I find that disc. Let's go. So I pretty much threw the perfect shot, I think. I found my disc in the middle of the fairway, about 25 feet for Eagle. And let's finish in style. Come on. Let's go. All right. What a course. Definitely had a great time. And now to some afterthoughts. And I gotta get on the phone with Avery pretty soon. All right, that was 18 holes at Borderlands. I think I played the correct layout. I played from blue tees to blue baskets. I think that's the longest layout you can play here. All in all, I mean, some of the pars were not really pro tour standard, but I love that kind of stuff. So playing, I played really safe. I didn't do anything crazy. Every shot was actually my first shot. There was no cuts. There was no gimmicks or anything. I wanted to keep it as real as possible. And I think I shot 13 under. I think with the eagle on the last hole. Um, I'm gonna go back and give, put it all into U-Disc and look at the footage to make sure. But uh, as of right now, what a fun place. There's like 10 different layouts you can play. There's uh, two different tee pads, two different baskets at least. Some holes have three different baskets, so you can basically make up your own course when you get out here. Couple open holes, couple really wooded holes. Nothing too crazy wooded, like everything's fair. And uh, I had a great time. I could have shot one or two better. I, I missed one very makeable putt, and then I could have made at least one of the long ones, but all in all, pretty happy. So if you ever get out here, play the blues, play the long holes, and try to beat. I think I shot 54. I think. 
Could be wrong, but it might have been, was it 54? I don't know. I'll look at the footage and then I'll know. I never answered the question if this is the best course in Massachusetts. And the answer is no. It is fun, lots of layouts, great place, but Maple Hill is still my number one. But definitely go check out Borderlands if you're in the area. Pretty close to Boston, probably like a good 30 minute drive from downtown Boston, just south of it. Thanks for watching everyone. I know this wasn't again the shortest and funnest video to watch, but I had a good time. Thank you, like and subscribe. See you at the next one.